Now that we got your attention, let the game begin! Game cartridges assembling. Greetings. Game loading. Mind your fingers. Big work in you, Rust Bucket. can learn a thing or two from even the most peculiar people. Today, for example, the revolting slob seems dressed to go someplace special. Birthday! A birthday party. Parties are so delightful. <laughs> and it seems the revolting slob is in the perfect mood for a party. Is the revolting slob being A, exhausting, B, extinguished, or C, exuberant? The answer is C, exuberant, which means full of joy. But if the revolting slob is going to a birthday party, shouldn't he be bringing a birthday gift? gift. Fabulous! I wonder if you would be kind enough to show us the gift you've decided to bring. Skunk. Oh, a skunk! Well, the revolting slob has come up with quite a different gift. Smells good. I don't think I've ever received a skunk as a birthday gift. Love skunk. Are you sure that's what you want to give to a friend? Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, is the revolting slob's birthday gift A. eccentric, B. ecstatic? Or C, exacerbated. <laughs> Skunk good gift. Ah. The answer is A, eccentric, which means odd or unusual behavior. Maybe the revolting slob could bring something in addition to the skunk. You're right. Give two skunks. Well, the revolting slob is no behind. certainly generous. Give more skunks? No, I think two is more than enough. Never enough skunk. So, with all these skunks, has the birthday gift been A, authorized, B, augmented, or C, automated? Too much. The correct answer is B, augmented, meaning the gift has been made greater or more numerous. Let's review. Party! The revolting slob's festive mood is exuberant. Giving a skunk as a birthday present is eccentric. And the addition of extra skunks augmented his gift. Oh, and one more interesting tidbit. The word exacerbated is used to describe something getting worse, like an explosion. No slobs or skunks were harmed in the filming of this show. house party. Good evening, 
I see that despite all warnings, you have chosen to attend the haunted house party. You may throw caution out whichever window you choose, because this evening you must deduce who our mystery guest is. Our guest of honor has just arrived. Do your best, or we'll do our worst. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. The traffic was abominable, in part due to me. Oh, good evening. May I be of service? Yep, sure thing. Would you mind putting my Lizzie in a safe place? Uh, why don't you just bring her in here? Uh, not unless you want oil on the carpet. Lizzie's the car I manufactured. Tin Lizzie, to be exact. Oh, I see. She's a model, you know. Model T, that is. Well, I'm famished. How long before dinner? It may be a while. Uh, we make each dish to order. Well, you might want to consider using an assembly line in your kitchen. It speeds up the service, and meals will be more affordable. Assembly line, eh? Uh, brilliant idea. <laughs> exactly why I developed it. I'll recommend it to Madame. <laughs> well, no need to thank me. I didn't. For you see, it was my wish to build a low-priced motor car for the common people. Oh, how exciting. Uh, does it come in many colors? You bet. You can have it in any color you want, so long as you want black. That's because I'm... Red light! Our guests have a first go at the answer. Here are the clues. He manufactured the Tin Lizzie or Model T. He developed the assembly line to make cars more affordable for the masses. But at the time, they were only available in my favorite color, black. <laughs> the mysterious mystery guest is... Yep, I am Henry Ford, the driving force behind the Ford Motor Car Company. And I am the haunted one, the dying force behind you. <laughs> so until the next haunted house party... And gentlemen, hey, 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 I'm talking here. That's better. All right, it's time once again to play Scoop or Scoop. Can you tell the straight scoop true from the animal poop false? Test your knowledge of the animal kingdom by separating fact from fiction, starting with this little guy right here. Poop or Scoop, when a male and female praying mantis hook up, you can expect them to live a long and happy life together. What do you think? If you agree praying mantises live to be old married couples, vote scoop. But if you think I'm not playing cricket, vote poop. The answer is poop. That's right, they might mate for life, but it's gonna be a real short one for the unlucky male. That's cause the female kills him and eats his head right after the honeymoon. Ooh. And I thought my wife was difficult. Okay, here comes another one. Poop or scoop? Monarch butterflies migrate all the way from Canada to Mexico and back. What do you say? If you think I'm spreading lies about butterflies, say poop. If not, go scoop. It's the straight scoop. The monarch butterfly does fly from Canada to Mexico and back, but it usually takes four generations of monarchs to make the trip. Okay, kids. Poop or scoop? Giraffes are afraid of heights. <laughs> do you think I'm telling a tall tale? If you do, poop. If you don't, scoop. The answer is, believe it or not, the straight scoop. Giraffes are afraid of falling over, so they don't like to lift their legs too far off the ground. They won't even take a step that's 12 inches high. Last question for you. <laughs> Do monkfish fish for other fish? If you think that's for real, say scoop. If you think something's fishy, pile on the poop. The answer is straight scoop. The monkfish, sometimes called the anglerfish, uses a funny looking appendage on its head to catch fish just like a fisherman does. Gotcha. 
Well, kids, that's all we got for you today. If you got only one right, you're a party pooper. Two, and you're a pooper scooper. Three makes you a super pooper scooper. If you got all four questions, you're what else? A super duper pooper scooper. I'm telling you, you can't get this kind of entertainment just anywhere. So please, join us again next time for Poop or Scoop. Distraction News with your anchor person, Dora Smarmy. Good evening. I'm Dora Smarmy, and welcome to Distraction News, where we give you the news and then ask you five questions about what we've just reported. So make sure you're not distracted. Now, for our top story today, how we speak. The voice box, or larynx, is located at the top of your windpipe, or trachea. As you breathe out, the air passes through the voice box and vibrates the vocal cords. When you breathe out without speaking, the gap between the vocal cords is large, so there is no voiced sound. When you speak, the voice box narrows, and the cords vibrate, making different sounds when you speak. Like, hee or, or, Making all the different sounds you need for speech involves moving the lips, tongue, and teeth. For example, separating your lips while you blow out makes a p or p sound. Doing the same thing while vibrating your vocal cords makes a b or b sound. When your voice box or larynx becomes irritated or infected, you get laryngitis. Laryngitis makes your voice sound hoarse, like this. Okay, now let's see how well you were able to remember the facts, and be sure to count how many you got right. The voice box is also known as the larynx, the lasagna, or the throat speaker. The answer is the larynx. The larynx is on top of the windpipe, also known as the breath tube, the trachea, or the air bone. The answer is the trachea. When you speak, the voice box narrows and the cords do what? Gargle, go to the Bahamas, or vibrate. The answer is vibrate. You need the lips, tongue, and teeth to make what? Funny faces, humongous bubblegum bubbles, or words. The correct answer is words. And finally, when you get laryngitis, how does your voice sound? Crispy, extra crispy, or hoarse? The answer is hoarse. That's horse with an A, not like the animal. So, how did you do? <sighs> hmm, must have an oat caught in my throat. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But remember, don't let anything distract you from watching Distraction News. So long. This has been Distraction News with your favorite cardboard cutout anchor person, Dora Smarmy. Timbers, yo ho ho! Look alive, ye lollygaggers! 
I am the incredibly dead Captain Bones. I've been sailing the seven seas for an eternity, and I'll tell ya, I'm a bored stiff. The only thing that saves me from going stark raven mad is making up math puzzles using nothing but me own bones. Now watch closely, and just do as I say, or I'll surprise the life out of ye. Just watch me bones. Let me show you what I mean. What's the matter? Can't handle a little math puzzle? Now, you know that one and one don't come to three. But can you fix her up so she makes sense? Just by moving one of me bones? And there she is. One plus one equals two. You see? There weren't nothing to it, you eyelash fluttering southern bells. Got the idea? Good, cause you're to plunder the next puzzle without me help. First, let me shovel up me bones. Now, don't be telling me that five plus nine equals but eleven, or I'll make you walk the plank, your hand cream using beauty school dropouts. Can you fix me bones so they make sense? Remember, you're to move only one of them, just like I showed you not a moment ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a clue for ye. Me born you're to move has but a short ways to go. Only one number needs to change. What happens when you turn a nine upside down, eh? Eh? Ah, enough! I'm bored to death! The answer is five plus six equals eleven. You babysitter needing Molly Coddle nurslings. I suppose I'll be needing to show you a second time. Arr! Next time we don't have to do a puzzle, you know. Instead, I could take you to an ice show or teach you to make pretty bows out of those ribbons in your hair, you pack of giggling schoolgirls. It's your friend Sketch here to lay something heavy on you. Just cause you got eyes doesn't mean you always see. You got to get the whole picture before you really know what's going down. Don't believe me? Well, I'm gonna show you some pages from my sketch pad, but not every page. See if you can tell what's happening before I show you the missing pages. You dig? Now picture this. A family packs up and moves, leaving their house completely empty. This cat comes be bop bopping along. He walks into the empty house. Less than a minute later, he comes back out again. Only the house that was just empty is now full. Crazy, man. Crazy. Are you hip to the scene? Can you figure out what really went down before I lay the missing pages of my sketch pad on you? Remember, you can look, but you don't always see. Check it out. Now, you might think he was carrying an inflatable raft in his pocket, but that ain't it. Or you may be thinking he turned on the water so the house was full of water, but that ain't it. So you gotta ask yourself, Daddy-o, what could a dude use to fill up an entire house in less than a minute? Are you seeing it? The dude turned the lights on. He filled up the house with light. Whoa, now that's heavy, you dig? 
So like I've been telling you, when you really use your eyes, you're gonna draw the right conclusion. with a different kind of cool running. I can't get back to my beautiful home in Jamaica cause I'm stuck in this tank. No worries, man. I got my Rasta sub and my dread swinging to the music. Look at this. Can you help Captain Bob? He's jamming in his soul. Okay, here's the deal. Now I'm gonna show you three things. And you got to tell me what they all got in common. But you got to do it before the water runs out of my tank. Let's go, gang. We got to get jamming. Use your eyes, use your brain, before his clues go down the drain. Like I said, we got three things. We got a camera, a basketball player, and stars. What do they all have in common? Quick, the level's dropping. A camera, a basketball player, and stars. We're almost at the bottom, man. Do you see it now? They're all things that shoot. Ain't that grand? A camera be shooting pictures, a basketball player be shooting hoops, and stars be shooting across the sky, man. Now this is fun. Next clue. What's this now? We got a loaf of bread, the sun, and an elevator. Can you figure out what ties them all together? Think hard, the watcher's already running away. Come on, people, you got a loaf of bread, the sun, and an elevator. Hurry, that drain be glugging. Time's up, man. They're all things that rise. A loaf of bread rises in the oven. The sun rises in the morning. And the elevator rises until it goes down, man. Well, that's it for today. Join me and me take next time for another round. We have gotten bomb. Now he's jamming in his song. It is time for Crash Box Rewind, where we flash back through the show and remind you how smart you really are. What could a dude use to fill up an entire house in less than a minute? Are you seeing it? The dude turned the lights on. He filled up the house with light. The voice box, or larynx, is located at the top of your windpipe, or trachea. As you breathe out, the air passes through the voice box and vibrates the vocal cords. The monkfish, sometimes called the anglerfish, uses a funny-looking appendage on its head to catch fish just like a fisherman does. Gotcha! He manufactured the Tin Lizzie or Model T. He developed the assembly line to make cars more affordable for the masses. Yep, I am Henry Ford, the driving force behind the Ford Motor Car Company. The revolting slob's festive mood is exuberant. <laughs> Giving a skunk as a birthday present is eccentric. And the addition of extra skunks augmented his gift. Well, that's it for now. See you next time.